dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Alicia Marie Blanks. I am the artistic director of AMB Dance Theater, and I will be having my gala performance here at the North Stage at Symphony Hall. I'd have to say I first started to appreciate the art of dance when I was about 12. I was dancing at Garden State Ballet, and I danced younger when I was about three. I started at Essex County College, but then I didn't really enjoy it, really. It was just something that my mom wanted me to do, and I was just good at it. And then when I moved on to Garden State Ballet, I appreciated the art of dance for itself and what I was capable of doing with it and I was able to move up from different levels from the white level which is the beginner to the black level which is advanced in about like six years so the transition for me starting out so young and then being able to go so far with it I started to realize that I can start making this into a career and so I guess at the age of 12 yeah I started it off pretty good <laughs> applause 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 that was beautiful um I to differ with that. I mean, we, I have a very slim body. I've auditioned for American Ballet Theater, for Juilliard, for um, other ballet companies, and although I didn't get into the company, they still said that I had the body for it. So for me to hear from other dancers saying that, other African American black dancers saying that um, they didn't, they don't have the build or they don't have the, um, the chest or the butt or whatever, we're all too big, we're too curvy. I, I think that's just a way to cope with the fact that they're saying that we're not the dancer that they're looking for. In other words, just they don't want to say plain old no, they're just like, no, this is the reason why, and they're making that, that the reason why. Um, I mean, everyone can dance. You can dance. I can dance. The guys cleaning can dance. It doesn't matter. You can do ballet. There's men that are in point shoes that have a whole company and they're performing Swan Lake on stage. My take on it is that I'm very happy that Misty Copeland did achieve that award. She's worked hard for it. And um, I have to say, a lot of people say I look like her sometimes. I'm like, oh, thank you. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, I mean, you know, African American dancers are all beautiful in their own sense. Um, the Dance Theater of Harlem, I mean, they've gone so far with making African American dancers so beautiful on stage as well. Absolutely not. Actually, people encouraged it more. They were more encouraging about the fact that I love to dance. I tried soccer, didn't go so well. I don't like being outside. <laughs> but being in a studio dancing, people actually were like, "Oh yeah, that's just, this is what you were born to do. You were a dancer, you're a performer. I've act, I've been acting and modeling, and I don't sing, but acting, modeling, and dancing is my thing. So." Uh, I'd have to say that I've never been bullied for it. I do think that when I was younger, people would say, um, how come, yeah, they would say, how come you don't sing? Because I would sing sometimes during uh, elementary school, and they'd be like, how come you don't sing? And I'm like, no, I'd rather dance. I'd rather just you sing, and then I perform to your words. But uh, no, everyone appreciated the fact that I wanted to be a dancer and a performer. Well, they all think that we just eat salad, <laughs> for one. They all think that we just eat salad and that we only drink coffee in the morning. And with the, Actually, the coffee thing is kind of true. I only, I only had coffee and toast today. But um, that we only eat like, certain things or to keep maintain our figure. And uh, we're always judging ourselves on, um, what, a, what is it, who looks best in what and everything. I mean, it's just friendly competition. So, I mean, the common misconception is we don't eat and... We only drink coffee, and our hair is always in a bun. It's not. As soon as class is over, our hair comes out. I hate having my hair in a bun. <laughs> it's so annoying sometimes. And, uh, yeah, especially for men, it is it will, the whole gay factor. Um, but I know several, not just ballet dancers, but modern dancers, contemporary male dancers, who um, have wives and girlfriends and everything. So, I mean, the fact that you want to already stereotype dancers and like oh you know you're anorexic and you're gay and uh, you don't need anything and you just have coffee it's very like it's almost demeaning in a way i mean you know we have lives too if i were to go to a doctor and say oh so you just save people's lives that's it like you know i you know give you prescriptions and i'm kind of like a therapist too you know i do other things so dancers do other things too we we don't just have our hair in the bun and wear leotards all day sometimes not all the time sometimes <laughs> I have to say modern. Uh, modern's a lot of fun because you get to be upside down. You get to throw yourself around. You don't. It's not really so. It's not so stiff. 
I like that. With ballet, it's like you have to really have a deep passion for ballet, I feel, and I do, but when I take like an African class or a modern class, it's just like, ah, oh, I can move with this. This is great. And uh, modern, to be more specific, I'd have to say Horton technique. Horton comes from uh, Avenue. Like they do a lot of Horton and Limon technique. And uh, it's it's very free and you're using your entire body on the floor or with a partner. So modern definitely is my escape goat or uh, when I'm mad at something and I need to get away, <laughs> I take a modern class. Uh, when I graduated college, I didn't want to join a company. I wanted to start my own. So uh, I said, well, you know, better late than never. So I might as well just do it now. So I graduated in 2013 and uh, it took a while because I needed devoted dancers. I needed loyal dancers. I needed people who I knew would uh, be able to learn choreography quickly and be able to say, Hey, we have a show next week. Are you free to do it? Yes, I'm free to do it. I needed people that I knew uh, I wouldn't get gray hair at 24. <laughs> so, and I found those people and I'm so happy for them and thankful. So right, choreographing the piece takes a lot of time. Um, it took me four years to come up with my choreographic senior piece for school. And I start, I literally started that like my freshman year because I knew that every dancer has to do that for their final showcase. So coming up with work and especially like trying, when you have a date, a deadline, and then you need to come up with it in a short amount of time, it's just like, okay, well, what does this move mean? Why, why do I pick this song? Uh, what's the outfit going to look like? Who, who would be the best person to do this choreography? So. When I started choreographing when I was younger, I started doing that when I was about like eight or nine. And I have I still have like all the books that I would put all my choreographic uh, pieces in. I used to uh, make stuff up to like NSYNC or uh, Beyonce or um, uh, what is it? Black Eyed Peas, like all those cool funky songs. And I would be like, right hand goes up and left hand goes down, like, you know, just simple stuff. So now when I look back, I'm like, why did I think to do right hand up, left hand down for, you know, whatever sync song, bye, bye, bye. I don't know, like, why Why did I do that? So now when I choreograph stuff, it's like I pick the song first and then I bounce to it, see how, how I feel when I move. And then I start thinking about, you know, well, let me just videotape myself dancing, improv to this song and see what I can come up with from that. And then I'll probably take, like, I don't know, three moves from a four-minute song that I just improvised to and uh, think about a story in my life as to why I wanted to choose this song and who will be dancing for it. So it kind of takes like me like at least two months to come up with a good, good choreography. Even still for the show that I'm having here in December, I've changed the song like three times to one of the dances that my company is doing. And they're like, Alicia, you're killing us. And I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, it's just a long process because each time it gets better and better, but you know, practice makes perfect and you want it to be perfect in the end because it's my choreography. I like to look at my choreography. I don't like to do it. I like to see what my brainstorming process was while it's performing on stage because every time dancers do it, it's not the same thing. And uh, I think that's what makes it so interesting is that every time my choreography is performed, it's not the same. So it's a long three month process for me sometimes. <laughs> Actually, it's, it's, um, <laughs> it's kind of the same. <laughs> Dance Moms, the new show that uh, comes on now, not Bring It, um, uh, Step It Up, the show that comes on after uh, Bring It on Fridays um, with the lady from Miami. What's her name? Joe Buck. Anyway, lady, it's called Step It Up. And uh, I take into that a lot. Um, that show basically is me in a nutshell. She doesn't have her own studio yet. She uh, works with the kids and treats them like they're professional dancers already. And I have uh, kids that are eight, nine, ten years old, and I'm like, you know, snapping at them, like, you know, hey, no, this is not how we do this here. I'm trying to teach them dance etiquette. And uh, the show hits home for me a lot. But when it comes to dance moms, um, that actually that actually does happen. When I was a kid, there were moms that would uh, to tell the uh, dance teacher, oh, this is my daughter, here are some roses, here's some chocolate, put my daughter in the front, blah, 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 and then the teacher would actually put their kid in the front. I'm just like, well, you know, I point my foot harder 
then this girl. So why is she in the front? And then it, it creates like all this drama with parents. So Dance Moms actually does relate to a lot of um, competition studios. But when it comes to my studio, it's not exactly the same thing because I make sure that all the kids are treated the same. I don't want any parents like fighting over spots or anything. And actually all the kids get along and the parents get along. They go out to eat afterwards after every time they have classes, which I think is so cool. But uh, for me, my personal experience with my mom when I was growing up dancing, oh no. <laughs> That's how I would like shift to different dance studios all the time. She was like, these parents are crazy. They don't do this. They don't do that. This dance teacher is crazy. Blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, you have the dance mom's uh, concept aspect and then you have the uh, friendly competition and you want to keep coming back to it all the time concept. So, I mean, it's like best of both worlds because they're both good dance studios. They're both very competitive and very like they'll cheat. They'll teach your kid how to dance. But it's like, do you want to offer so much drama and headache for your child or would you rather them learn and have fun at the same time? Say I would love for my legacy to be that I was um, a proud native of Newark. Um, I've, I've always been a strong advocate for uh, the arts for Newark because they're there, but they're not very, they're not as prominent as they should be. Uh, there's so many promising things that can happen in the city and some of it's starting to come out little by little, but I feel that since I was able to know what the arts were, that it's, it's grown maybe like 20% where it should be at like 80%, you know? So, um, I would love for my legacy wherever I plan on um, moving to or staying or settling down. I would love for it to be that I always helped Newark with getting its arts out there for kids, for uh, musicians, for singers, for actors, and trying to help the next generation bring it out even more. Um, and. I don't know. It's that's hard. It's a hard thing to say for a legacy, but that that definitely be be it to say that I helped North in some way, shape, or form help the arts grow in in some way.